today we're going to finish chapter 15 of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So last time we read, Harry and Hermione were able to pass off Norbert the dragon to Charlie's friends, but they were so excited about getting the dragon, you know, passed on that when they were going back into the castle from the tallest tower, they left behind the invisibility cloak. So they get to the bottom of the stairs and guess who's waiting for them? Filch. And of course, he takes them straight to Professor McGonagall, who had already caught Malfoy earlier in the night. And they had seen this and they were like, yes, what's better than Malfoy getting in trouble and us being able to get rid of this dragon without him getting in the way? But then of course they were a little careless, so they got caught too. Um, and then poor Neville got caught in the mix because uh, he had found out that Malfoy was trying to come get them in trouble. So he had come and tried to warn uh, Harry and Hermione about what's happening, and then he also got caught. So all four of them are in trouble, and they're all going to have to have detention. So where we left off, they got the note that, you know, they're going to have detention with Filch. And then Filch takes them to the outside of the Forbidden Forest where they meet up with Hagrid. And he tells them that they're going to be having their punishment with them. So it's they've been really confused. They're like, well, it's Hagrid, you know, like Harry and Hermione are like, Hagrid's our friend. But they're going into the Forbidden Forest, which is forbidden. It's not allowed. And it's scary because they know there are a lot of dangerous things in there. And that's the reason it's forbidden. So we're going to find out what happens when they go into the Forbidden Forest. I do want to warn you that, like before, there are some parts in here that could be a little scary. It might not be, but I just want to give you that warning. And remind you again, this is a fictional book. Anything we read in here, not true, not possible, not real. So just remember that, and, you know, if you are feeling scared, you can always stop it. But uh, I don't think it's that bad. I just always want to be safe and give you a little warning. Um, but I'll be interested to hear what you think after we read it. He led them to the very edge of the forest. Holding his lamp up high, he pointed down a narrow winding earth track that disappeared into the thick black trees. A light breeze lifted their hair as they looked into the forest. Look there, said Hagrid. See that stuff shining on the ground? Silvery stuff? That's unicorn blood. There's a unicorn in there, been hurt badly by some of it. This is the second time in a week. I found one dead last Wednesday. We're going to try and find the poor thing. We might have to put it out of its misery. And what if whatever hurt the unicorn finds us first? Said Malfoy, unable to keep the fear out of his voice. There's nothing that lives in the forest that'll hurt you if you were with me or Fang, said Hagrid, and keep to the path. Right now, we're going to splinter two parties and follow the trail in different directions. There's blood all over the place. It must have been staggering around since last night, at least. I want Fang, said Malfoy quickly, looking at Fang's long teeth. All right, but I warn you, he's a coward, said Hagrid. So me, Harry, and Hermione will go one way, and Draco, Neville, and Fang will go the other. Now, if any of us finds a unicorn, we'll send up green sparks, right? Get your wands out and practice now. That's it. And if anyone gets in trouble, send up red sparks and we'll all come and find you. So be careful. Let's go. The forest was black and silent. A little way into it, they reached a fork in the earth path and Harry, Hermione, and Hagrid took the left path while Malfoy, Neville, and Fang took the right. They walked in silence, their eyes on the ground. Every now and then, a ray of moonlight through the branches above lit a spot of silver-blue blood on the fallen leaves. Harry saw that Hagrid looked very worried. Could a werewolf be killing the unicorns? Harry asked. Not fast enough, said Hagrid. It's not easier to catch a unicorn. They're powerful magic creatures. I never knew one to be hurt before. They walked past a mossy tree stump. Harry could hear running water. There must be a stream somewhere close by. There were still spots of unicorn blood here and there along the winding path. You all right, Hermione? Hagrid whispered. Don't worry. It can't gone far if it's this badly hurt. And then we'll be able to get behind that tree. Hagrid seized Harry and Hermione and hoisted them off the path behind a towering oak. He pulled out an arrow and fitted it into his crossbow, raising it and ready to fire. The three of them listened. Something was slithering over dead leaves nearby. It sounded like a cloak trailing along the ground. Hagrid was squinting up the dark path. But after a few seconds, the sound faded away. I knew it, he murmured. There's some out here that shouldn't be. A werewolf, Harry suggested. That wasn't no werewolf, and it wasn't no unicorn either, said Hagrid grimly. 
Right. Follow me, but careful now. They walk more slowly, ears straining for the faintest sound. Suddenly, in a clearing ahead, something definitely moved. Who's there? Haggard called. Show yourself. I'm armed. And into the clearing came. Was it a man or a horse? To the waist, a man with red hair and beard. But below that was a horse's gleaming chestnut body with a long, reddish tail. Harry and Hermione's jaws dropped. Oh, it's you, Ronan, said Hagrid in relief. How are you? He walked forward and shook the centaur's hand. So centaur is half human, half horse. Good evening to you, Hagrid, said Ronan. He had a deep, sorrowful voice. Were you going to shoot me? Can't be too careful, Ronan said Hagrid, patting his crossbow. There's something bad loose in this forest. This is Harry Potter and Hermione Granger, by the way. Students up at the school. And this is Ronan, you two. He's a centaur. We'd noticed, said Hermione faintly. Good evening, said Ronan. Students, are you? And do you learn much about the school? Um, a bit, said Hermione timidly. A bit? Well, that's something, Ronan sighed. He flung back his head and stared at the sky. Mars is bright tonight. Yeah, said Haggard, glancing up too. Listen, I'm glad we've run into you, Ronan, because there's a unicorn been hurt. You seen anything? Ronan didn't answer immediately. He stared unblinkingly upward and sighed again. Always the innocent are the first victims, he said. So it has been for the ages past. So it is now. Yeah, said Haggard. But have you seen anything, Ronan? Anything unusual? Mars is bright tonight, Ronan repeated, while Haggard watched him impatiently. Unusually bright. Yeah, but I was meaning anything unusual a bit nearer home, said Haggard. So you haven't noticed anything strange? Yet again, Ronan took a while to answer. At last he said, the forest hides many secrets. A movement in the trees behind Ronan made Haggard raise his bow again, but it was only a second centaur, black-haired and bodied and wilder looking than Ronan. Hello, Bane, said Haggard. All right. Good evening, Haggard. I hope you are well. Well enough. Look, I've just been asking Ronan. You seen anything odd in here lately? There is a unicorn been injured. Would you know anything about it? Bane walked over to stand next to Ronan. He looked skyward. These centaurs are acting strange. Mars is bright tonight, he said simply. We've heard, said Haggard grumpily. Well, if either of you do see anything, let me know, won't you? We'll be off then. Harry and Hermione followed him out of the clearing, staring over their shoulders at Ronan and Bane until the trees blocked their view. Never, said Haggard irritably. Try and get a straight answer out of a centaur. Ruddy stargazers, not interested in anything closer in the moon. Are there many of them in here? asked Hermione. Oh, a fair few. Keep themselves to themselves mostly, but they're good enough about turning up if ever I want a word. They're deep mind centaurs. They know things, just don't let on much. Do you think that was a centaur we heard earlier? Said Harry. Did that sound like hooves to you? Nah, if you ask me, that's what's been killing the unicorns. Never heard anything like it before. They walked on through the dense, dark trees. Harry kept looking nervously over his shoulder. He had the nasty feeling they were being watched. He was very glad that they had Hagrid and his crossbow with them. They had just passed a bend in the path when Hermione grabbed Hagrid's arm. Hagrid, look! Red sparks! The others are in trouble! You two wait here, Hagrid shouted. Stay on the path. I'll come back for you. They heard him crashing away through the undergrowth and stood looking at each other very scared until they couldn't hear anything but the rustling of leaves around them. You don't think they've been hurt, do you? whispered Hermione. I don't care if Malfoy has, but if something's got Neville, it's our fault he's here in the first place. The minutes dragged by. Their ears seemed sharper than usual. Harry seemed to be picking up every sigh of the wind, every cracking twig. What was going on? Where were the others? At last, a great crunching noise announced Hagrid's return. Malfoy, Neville, and Fang were with him. Hagrid was fuming. Malfoy, it seemed, had sneaked up behind Neville and grabbed him as a joke. Neville had panicked and sent up the sparks. We'll be lucky to catch anything now with the racket you two were making. Right. We're changing groups. Neville, you stay with me and Hermione. Harry, you go with Bang and this idiot. I'm sorry, Hagrid added in a whisper to Harry. But he'll have a harder time frightening you, and we've got to get this done. So Harry set off into the heart of the forest with Malfoy and Fang. 
They walked for nearly half an hour deeper and deeper into the forest until the path became almost impossible to follow because the trees were so thick. Harry thought the blood seemed to be getting thicker. There were splashes on the roots of a tree as though the poor creature had been thrashing around in pain close by. Harry could see it clearing ahead through the tangled branches of an ancient oak. Look, he murmured, holding out his arm to stop Malfoy. Something bright white was gleaming on the ground. They inched closer. It was a unicorn, all right, and it was dead. Harry had never seen anything so beautiful and sad. Its long slender legs were stuck out at odd angles where it had fallen and its mane was spread pearly white on the dark leaves. Harry had taken one step toward it and a slithering sound made him freeze where he stood. A bush on the edge of the clearing quivered. Then out of the shadows, a hooded figure came crawling across the ground like some stalking beast. Harry Malfoy and Fang stood transfixed. The cloaked figure reached the unicorn, lowered its head over the wound in the animal's side, and began to drink its blood. Ah! Malfoy let out a terrible scream and bolted. So did Fang. The hooded figure raised its head and looked right at Harry. Unicorn blood was dribbling down its front. It got to its feet and came swiftly toward Harry. He couldn't move for fear. Then a pain like he'd never felt before pierced his head. It was as though his scar were on fire. Half blinded, he staggered backward. He heard hooves behind him galloping, and something jumped clean over Harry, charging at the figure. The pain in Harry's head was so bad he fell to his knees. It took a minute or two to pass. When he looked up, the figure had gone. A centaur was standing over him, not Ronan or Bane. This one looked younger. He had white blonde hair and a palomino body. Are you all right, said the centaur, pulling Harry to his feet. Yes, thank you. What was that? The centaur didn't answer. He had astonishingly blue eyes, like pale sapphires. He looked carefully at Harry, his eyes lingering on the scar that stood out, livid, on Harry's forehead. You are the Potter boy, he said. You had better get back to Hagrid. The forest is not safe at this time, especially for you. Can you ride? It will be quicker this way. My name is Ferenz, he added, as he lowered himself onto the, his front legs so that Harry could clamber onto his back. There was suddenly a sound of more galloping from the other side of the clearing. Ronan and Bane came bursting through the trees, their flanks heaving and sweating. Ferenz, Bane thundered, what are you doing? You have a human on your back. Have you no shame? Are you a common mule? Do you realize who this is, said Ferenz? This is the Potter boy. The quicker he leaves the forest, the better. What have you been telling him? growled Bane. Remember, friends, we are sworn not to set ourselves against the heavens. Have we not read what is to come in the movements of the planets? Ronan pawed the ground nervously. I'm sure Ferenz thought he was acting for the best, he said in his gloomy voice. Bane kicked his back legs in anger. For the best? What has that to do with us? Centers are concerned with what has been foretold. It is not our business to run around like donkeys after stray humans in our forest. Ferenc suddenly reared on to his hind legs in anger so that Harry had to grab his shoulders to stay off. Do you not see that unicorn, Ferenc bellowed at Bane? Do you not understand why it was killed? Or have the planets not let you in on that secret? I set myself against what is lurking in this forest, Bane. Yes, with humans alongside me if I must. And Ferenc whisked around with Harry clutching on as best as he could. They plunged off into the trees, leaving Ronan and Bane behind them. Harry didn't have a clue what was going on. Why is Bane so angry, he asked. What was that thing you saved me from anyway? Friends slowed to a walk, warned Harry to keep his head bowed in case of low-hanging branches, but did not answer Harry's question. They made their way through the trees in silence for so long that Harry thought Friends didn't want to talk to him anymore. They were passing through a particularly dense patch of trees, however, when Friends suddenly stopped. Harry Potter... Do you know what unicorn blood is used for? No, said Harry, startled by the odd question. We've only used the horn and tail hair in potions. That is because it is a monstrous thing to slay a unicorn, said Friends. Only one who has nothing to lose and everything to gain would commit such a crime. The blood of a unicorn will keep you alive, even if you are an inch from death, but at a terrible price. You have slain something pure and defenseless to save yourself. And you will have but a half-life, a cursed life, 
from the moment the blood touches your lips. Harry stared at the back of Ferenz's head, which was dappled silver in the moonlight. Well, who'd be that desperate, he wondered aloud. If you're going to be cursed forever, that's better, isn't it? It is, Ferenz agreed, unless all you need is to stay alive long enough to drink something else, something that will bring you back to full strength and power, something that will mean you can never die, Mr. Potter. Do you know what is hidden in the school at this very moment? The Sorcerer's Stone, of course, the elixir of life, but I don't understand who. Can you think of nobody who has waited many years to return to power, who has clung to life awaiting their chance? It was as though an iron fist had clenched suddenly around Harry's heart. Over the rustling of the trees, he seemed to hear once more what Hagrid had told him on the night they had met. Some say he died. Paul swallow up, in my opinion. Don't know if he had enough human left in him to die. Do you mean, Harry croaked, that was Vol. Harry, Harry, are you all right? Hermione was running toward them down the path, Hagrid puffing along behind her. I'm fine, said Harry, hardly knowing what he was saying. The unicorn's dead, Hagrid. It's in that clearing back there. This is where I leave you, Ferenz murmured, as Hagrid hurried off to examine the unicorn. You're safe now. Harry slid off his back. Good luck, Harry Potter, said Ferenz. The planets have been read wrongly before now, even by centaurs. I hope this is one of those times. He turned and cantered back into the depths of the forest, leaving Harry shivering behind him. Ron had fallen asleep in the dark common room, waiting for them to return. He shouted something about Quidditch fouls when Harry roughly shook him awake. In a matter of seconds, though, he was wide-eyed as Harry began to tell him and Hermione what had happened in the forest. Harry couldn't sit down. He paced up and down in front of the fire. He was still shaking. Snape wants the stone for Voldemort, and Voldemort's waiting in the forest, and all this time we thought Snape just wanted to get rich. Stop saying the name, said Ron in a terrified whisper, as if he thought Voldemort could hear them. Harry wasn't listening. Ferenc saved me, but he shouldn't have done so. Bane was furious. He was talking about interfering with what the planets say is going to happen. They must show that Voldemort's coming back. Bane thinks Ferenc should have let Voldemort kill me. I suppose that's written in the stars as well. Will you stop saying the name? Ron hissed. So all I've got to wait for now is Snape to steal the stone, Harry went on feverishly. Then Voldemort will be able to come and finish me off. Well, I suppose Bane will be happy. Hermione looked very frightened, but she had a word of comfort. Harry, everyone says Dumbledore is the only one you know who was ever afraid of. With Dumbledore around, you know who won't touch you. Anyways, who says the centaurs are right? It sounds like fortune telling to me. And Professor McGonagall says that's a very imprecise branch of magic. The sky had turned light before they stopped talking. They went to bed exhausted, their throats sore. But the night's surprises weren't over. When Harry pulled back his sheets, he found his invisibility cloak folded neatly underneath it. There was a note pinned to it, just in case. All right. This was a very dramatic ending to the chapter. So... We now have an idea of, well, at least Harry's suspicion about why he thinks that Snape is trying to get the stone. And of course, all of these realizations he's having are very scary because obviously, you know who is back. You know whose top enemy is going to be Harry, who stopped him from being able to kill him and his family and caused him to disappear for what's been a very long time. So this is definitely a reason for him to be afraid. And I don't know what's going to happen next. You tell me. What do you think? <laughs>